lonely. I mean, when you don't have people that you can rely on other than your family, but you can't you always talk to your family, you can't always relate to your family. It's really isolated. You can't, you know, something happened, and all you, something big happened, all you can do is write it down in your diary, although nothing big happens when you don't have any friends. So, I mean, it was just really difficult. And then you meet new people, but having been through this so many times, I knew that the first people you meet, you can't always just trust them right off the bat, because that's how you get, like, hurt, you know, if you just open up to everybody right away. So even after I started making, after I went to Baton Rouge High and started making friends in my school, I was really wary because, I mean, this time I was friends with them, but I was still, it was isolated in school and, you know, I had my little group, but even a lot of them I don't really talk to anymore because people aren't always who, who you think they are, including me. You know, when you first meet people, you get a first impression that's not always the right one. So John, how many friends do you have? Well, I have a few friends, you know. I have my certain group of best friends, and then I have, you know, a group of kids I just like to hang out with. Mm -hmm. How many of those friends do you think are gonna stick with you for, you know, like, the long haul? Well, I would say, like, the kids I'm going to college with, you know, I've been friends with them for a long time, and we decided to go to the same college to uh, mm -hmm. stay friends, and really, they're like my brothers, and I trust them with my life, mm -hmm. so. I think those are the friends that are gonna stay with me during the long haul. So, like, uh, how many friends do you have? Well, I'd agree with you. I just have like a lot, like a group of acquaintances and a group of really good friends. Mm -hmm. And I would agree with you on what you said about, you know, college and mm -hmm. those are the people you're really going to talk to. Yeah, I, I hope I still talk to the other people, mm -hmm. but I know I'm going to talk to the ones in college. You know, a true friend is a gift from God. And as our spotlight guest Cora said in the opening of our show, life can be lonely without friends. But how do you find those true friends, the people who you can enjoy spending time with and it won't break your confidence. Finding true friendship, that's what we'll be talking about today. Hi everyone, I'm Nicole. And I'm John, and this is Real Faith TV. We have two spotlight guests today, Cora and Katie. They found true friendship with each other after moving to a new town and finding it difficult to make new friends. They will talk about how they met and what they learned about making friends along the way. We'll also talk with our studio guests, but first, let's meet the teens on the street and find out how they describe a true friend. A true friend, it's the one that's always there, tells you the truth even though it hurts. Someone that's loyal and that will be with you no matter what. As somebody who knows how to stay with you in good times and bad times. Someone who always got your back, doesn't like lie to you, doesn't like go behind your back, do stuff. So they have to be like straight up with you. I think a true friend is someone who will stick up for you, like no matter what happens. I think it's someone you can trust with any secret that you tell them. I think there's someone that cares about you and that you care about them. Loyal, honest, and there for you. A true friend is someone who's always there for you and someone who will help you through thick and thin. A true friend is someone who's always going to stand up for you and be by your side all the time. Uh, I would say a true friend is someone who's always there for you, someone you can depend on, someone you can trust. Somebody that's always there for you when you need them. Like If you have a problem, you can go to them no matter what, and they won't tell anyone about it. John, let's see how our studio guests describe a true friend. Okay, uh, with us today we have Beth, Ross, Vanessa, Catherine, and Anthony. How do you describe a true friend? Um, I agree with a lot of the people on the street. Um, basically someone that's, you know, got your back through whatever and um, that you could tell anything to and you know that that person, you know, won't go and repeat what you said to somebody else, you know. Mm -hmm. You could tell them anything and you know it's like a safe, you know, it won't go any further than that. Mm -hmm. And it's one that's like truly there for you through like anything, you know, like if you're having a hard time, they won't like shy away from you or like not understand, like it's really someone that's there with you, you know, through thick and thin. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you gotta be able to trust your friends too, like your true friends, you can trust them. No matter with what's going on, you can tell one of your friends something and you know he's gonna give you the best advice that he can give mm -hmm. or she can give. And I think in like deciphering a true friend from just like an acquaintance is like you look for certain qualities in like a true friend. Like I know I personally look for like loyalty, I like humorous people, and you know, I like, I look for certain qualities. So I think when you find that, mm -hmm. you find your true friends. As we said, a true friend is someone who's honest, trustworthy, and loyal. 
A group of teenage girls describe true friends as those who know you better than you know yourself. They love you and accept you as you are. A true friend is honest about the way you look and the way you act. When you consider doing something out of character, which could be harmful or even get you into trouble. They're the ones who give you advice that support who you are and what you believe in. They stick by you, whatever choice you make in the end. Do you have a friend or two who you consider a true friend? We asked the teens on the street to tell us about these friends. And also about whether they feel that they are a true friend to others. Let's check it out. They're both my true friends because, yeah, we, we can play games and stuff and it's fun. And I can trust them with all my secrets. Yeah, I have a couple friends where you can just act like a plain idiot in front of them and they wouldn't tell anybody about it. I have a lot of friends and here two of them and they're my friends because they're here and they like me and I like them. First of all, this guy right here. And uh, I have this friend um, that I've known since I was three years old and this kid, he and I have been through so much together and it's just amazing how great our friendship is. Do you have anyone who you can call a true friend? Uh, not really. My dad, my mom, my sister, family, family. How how are they a good friend to you? They're always there for me. They're loyal. They don't lie to me. And they're they're friendly. Okay, my best friend Abby. Um, she's just a big sweetheart, and she's a really strong Christian, and we're just really good friends. Do you have anyone you can call a true friend? Tell me about this person. Hi. Uh, <laughs> okay, that's cool. Veronica's my true friend. <laughs> Katie's my true friend too. <laughs> My sister, or else Winnie, my best friend, because she's always there for me. Uh, well, my friend Mike, he plays baseball and stuff, and he goes on vacation with me and stuff. And my friend Kendra helps me with school, and she's my school friend. Yeah, her name's Corinne, and I can tell her anything. We think a lot the same. Actually, she's here with me right now, and uh, we've been through hell and back, and she's still my best friend regardless. Well, actually, it's Jesus. He's the one that's always there. And by him, I know a lot of people that could be my, my good friends. <laughs> Do you feel that you were true in your friendship with others? Most of them, yeah. I put my friends first before me, so I would say, yeah. Not as much as I should be. Yes, very much so. How so? Because I don't make fun of my friends and uh, I help them if like they're sad or something like that. Okay. I try to be, and if I'm not, then I correct my mistakes. Yeah, I stay true to my friendships. I'm loyal to my friends. I try to be, but sometimes I can struggle with like gossip and things like that. I'm always there for them. They know that they can call me any hour of the day or night. That's how I feel about my friends. They can call me anytime and I'm there for them. You know what? We all have stories about like really true friends that have done something incredible and I have many like that. Like my friend Anthony here, you know, one of my best friends, known him for a long time. Whenever I need a ride, whenever I need someone to come to the studio with me or, you know, just so I need to talk, like, talk to someone, Anthony's always there for me. And you know what? He's a, a true friend and, you know, it feels good to have people like that in my life. Mm -hmm. So what about you guys? Can you like think of any experiences when a friend like really helped you out? changed your life or anything? About a year ago, um, a good friend of mine passed away in a car accident. And when that happened, I had a really hard time with it, obviously, because that's a tough situation to deal with. And during that situation, I think, is when I found out a lot about who my true friends really are, because so many people were just there for me, like sending me, um, a couple friends sent me letters telling me they were sorry for my loss, and people letting me talk about her and the memories I have of my friend that passed away. And just so many people were really there for me, and those are the people that I know are my true friends, and I just hope that someday I can return the favor that they did for me. Mm -hmm. Come on, guys, I know you all have some true friend <laughs> stories here. Um, I had, there was a time a few months ago that I was going through like a really hard time, and I felt like I couldn't handle like all the stuff that was going on around me. And there was this person that I had just met, um, we were leading a retreat together, and he basically like pulled me out of like the darkness, and we were like totally bonded through, the, through that experience, and like we're really close, and we've been really close since then. That's great. And mm -hmm. yeah, he's awesome, I would really consider him a true friend. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, like a lot of your friends, you, you like meet and become good friends with them at the lowest points of your life, you know, when you really need someone there for you. And you know there'd be a true friend if you just meet them, and they, they pull you out of like your hole or whatever and completely like change your life for the better. 
and that's a sign of a good friend, you mm -hmm. know, and he never says, you know what, you owe me one, you know, one's my favorite coming back. He does it, he didn't, then he forgets about it, mm -hmm. you know. That's what a friend is. And I can, like, directly relate to what you were just talking about, like, at the lowest points in your life. Um, I actually met, well, my best friend today was at, you know, a very low point in his life, and he was, like, involved in drugs and um, just not living a very good lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And I think, like, my influence has turned him around somewhat, so I think you find good friends. Yeah, like that one girl said, you know, like, Jesus is always there for you. Jesus is your best friend. You're like, he's always right there. You know, it can be difficult to make new friends when you go to a new school or move to a new town. And leaving your friends behind can make it even tougher. Cora and Katie found themselves in the same situation. Although they didn't live in the same town or go to the same school, they met because their fathers worked together. Next, they talked to us about what it was like making friends in a new environment and how they found true friendship in each other. I grew up in a neighborhood that was like an excerpt from Wonder Years. It was a little southern community right off the beach where the people in the shops around the corner knew you by face and name. They had block parties and, you know, everybody knew each other. It was definitely a culture shock coming to a place that was so seemingly, it seemed like cold. The weather was colder. <laughs> the people were more isolated. They were more in their groups already. If you were a newcomer, it was harder to make your way in. And there weren't, it wasn't as much of a social scene. And so I didn't know how to make friends in that environment. Well, when I first moved to Piscataway, even though it was a new place and it was kind of a clean slate, I kind of doomed myself from the beginning by being so mean. And um, I was just kind of scared. I was moving, I had moved away from some place I'd lived for all my life and I'd had a best friend who, you know, it was like, yeah, we're gonna go to college together and we're gonna share a dorm and then we're gonna, when we get married, we'll live uh, in houses side by side, you know? So we, we kind of had this dream of, uh, you know, friends forever. So, you know, I just became really bitter. I was like, well, if I have to lose my best friend to uh, the distance of 71 miles, why should I have to be anyone's friend? I just didn't wanna have friends who were gonna leave me or friends that I would have to leave. And just scared, just plain scared. I was just really uh, broken hearted and um, I wasn't willing to give myself a second chance, never mind other people. Well, there was a long time where, because I didn't have friends, like I just became very, very close to my, my mother, which is good. It's very good to be close to your mother. Um, but for a long time, my uh, dad and my mother noted on this. I became best friends with my stuffed rabbit, <laughs> so <laughs> I, I uh, that that shows you uh, the desperateness there. I was just, I was just really sad, and I, I remember crying a lot and crying to sleep. And eventually, um, one of our good friends, Sam Garfield, approached me, and she just, you know, totally took me in. And she she wanted to be my friend, and um, really, I just had to rely on other people. And I had to stop saying, well, I have to do everything for myself. Because I realized at that time in my life that, you know, I do need to depend on other people a lot. Kate's, like, Kate's one of my best friends, if not my best friend. Because she's, she's been there for me. She was the first real friend I made when I moved here. And she probably will be one of my best friends for a long time. Because if we've gotten through this much, hon, there's no turning back now. <laughs> Um, she's honest, <laughs> she's trustworthy, compassionate, and we think alike. You know, I can't describe it. We are very different, but in most cases, we think very similar way. And I think, Caroline, that you're my good friend because you really work at things. You, you work at making people accept you. You work at making sure people know who you really are, not like this person that you've created just to be cool. Uh, you really work at um, trying to improve any flaws you see or you think others see uh, in a self-improving way, not a changing way. You're also very much a uh, I've experienced everything sort of person and that's, that's a really nice thing to share. 
when you're a nice little naive person like me <laughs> and you really need somebody who's just uh, seen, seen more than you. You need somebody who has different experiences. I know what it's like to like, make new friends. I have went to different schools my whole life and moved a lot. So uh, what about you guys? Have you, you know, had any experiences with you know, leaving old friends and making new ones? Uh, yeah, I remember all my life I went to public school up to eighth grade and I had the same friends. They lived you know, a mile down the road and I went to their house every day. Same friends. And then I went to a Catholic school for my, like, my high school. And first it was like, all right, I'm going to hate this. I'll leave in a year and I'll you know, go back to my old friends. But I met a lot of cool people there, a lot of people. Like you, like John right here, who became really true friends, who I know I could trust, who I know like will be by my side no matter what. Like get a phone call, you know they'll drive three hours if I need them to, you know, just because I asked them to. And it's really nice that I've been able to find that. Yeah, you know it makes you feel good to find people like that. You feel wanted, and and you know that you like you mean something to somebody, and that makes you feel good about yourself. And when you have friends, you have confidence to do things that you normally wouldn't do. What advice do you have for others on how to go about making friends? Cora and Katie talk about this in our next segment. Somebody who is having trouble finding friends, I would just tell them to relax, pray about it, because there's people out there for everybody. Everybody needs friends. Everybody's intended to have friends. And if you have faith and you just go along, you'll find them. Part of the relaxing part is being yourself. It sounds crazy, but it's better than becoming friends with somebody who thinks you're somebody you're not. Yeah. So I think we've all tried that. It doesn't work. <laughs> no. So be yourself, relax, be prayerful, be open, be, um, be willing to accept other people for their differences and see that their differences are really what makes the world like such a great place because everybody's different. The youth group that I got involved with helped me through it a lot because you know it was first it was an excellent program second I had Katie there and everyone was really friendly it was the first time when everybody was really accepting right off the bat since I moved to New Jersey you know I the minute I walked in the door a bunch of people walked up and introduced themselves. Our most exciting adventures were us going to like retreats. I mean like how many people can say that? How many people can say the best time I ever had was at a retreat? I think it's important to have one or two friends that share your same faith because it's one less thing that you have to contest to other people. It's, it's a big part of your upbringing. It's a big part of who you are. Sharing something like Christian morals is helpful because you, it, it's kind of like um, reverse psychology to all the peer pressure you have. Because you'll have peer pressure from your other friends who uh, might not understand why you uh, don't want to do drugs, you don't want to drink, you don't want to have sex, but this friend might understand because they have your same morals. moral system. And yeah. so they kind of do a reverse peer pressure like, no, no, you should really stick to what you think. Like, not like uh, the other people who are saying, do this. They're saying, no, you don't have to do that because that's not who you are. You know, they, they tell you who you are a lot. And even if it's not important about with who you are, if, they, your, your if faith. they have the same moral system as you, it may not even be about who you are, it's about what you know is right and what you know that they really know is right. And just keeping them grounded on that, it's like, no, you're, you shouldn't do that. You know that's not right, you know that's not gonna help you, you know that that's the wrong thing to do and it's gonna make your problems worse, not better. Mm -hmm. You know, like Katie said, uh, I think it's important to be yourself. And I also think it's important to, you know, find friends that will like you for who you are and not, you know, want you to change at all so they can hang out with you. Because if you have to do that, then, you know, their friendship's not worth it. What advice do you guys have on how to make new friends and find that true friend? I think that you should just be yourself. Uh, that's most important. Like, don't try to change, you know, who you are to try to fit in with a certain group of people that you think could be good friends because most of the time when you're yourself, you know, you're going to find someone like when you're not even looking for a friend, you know. Mm -hmm. It's just going to happen that way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You should also try and be really accepting of others because if I always went by my first impressions of people, I would not have so many of the people who are my close friends now because I would never would have taken the time to get to know them. So just try and be open towards other people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and to add on what Ross said, if you're not really like, your, your true self, like who you are when you meet someone, 
mm -hmm. they're gonna be friends with a fake you, like who they think you are. And that wouldn't be fair to them because they think they're getting a true friend here. They're trying to make a true friend with someone who doesn't really exist. Mm -hmm. To find true friendship, you have to be ready to be a true friend. That means you have to choose to be honest, trustworthy, and loyal. You have to care for another person enough to put that person first. It took a long time for Jesus' friends to be ready for this kind of a relationship. They were often afraid of what other people thought or what the authorities would do. They were selfish, squabbling over who among them would be the greatest. Judas betrayed Jesus and Peter denied him. Only by the experience of being loved unconditionally were they able to learn to love that way themselves. Jesus, therefore, is a perfect role model and teacher when it comes to finding and being a true friend. We asked the teens on the street if their faith teaches them anything about being a true friend. Let's see what they have to say. Well, it definitely teaches you like some of the values of like you follow Christ and that's another thing you have in common with your friends and you always want to be like him. It helps me define what a good friend is and what I should be to other people. It like helps my like be, like my belief in people and like I, I'll give people more chances. If you don't have anything to believe in, like what can you tell them if they're in need? Definitely. I think that God is always there with us and and I think he reflects our friends, too. The Lord really defines for us what a friend is. Like the golden rule, do unto you as you would do unto others. And so if I try to be nice to everyone. Um, God, like his love, when he gives us his love, then we can get show it to other people. And um, just as closer we get to God, and the closer we get to other people. Yeah, the Bible says a lot about friendship, and it helps you guide yourself to being a better friend. Yeah, I think the Bible does describe how to be a pretty good friend. If you follow that, you should be a pretty good friend. I think it does too, but sometimes it makes you wonder whether you should be their friend or whether they're leading you away from what you should be doing. When you meet God and when you, when you meet Jesus, you meet a real friendship. So that's why you can give something like that. Cora and Katie also see Jesus as a role model. Let's see what they had to say about this. Uh, Jesus is, he was a friend to those who knew him, and he's still a friend to all of us, even though, you know, it's not like a friend like Katie's my friend. Katie, call her up on the cell phone. You want to, you want to, <laughs> can I, do you think I could stay the night at your house next Friday? You know, it's not something like that, but it's something different. You can still talk to them. He's not judgmental. He's, and you don't have to have a cell phone said. to call him. Yeah. You don't have to phone, have Save a phone money at all. on the phone bills. <laughs> Uh, Save lots of money on the phone bills. Everything that we said before, compassion, As, honesty, yeah. um, loving, unconditional love, it's Ooh. all embodied by Jesus Christ. It's, he's not a slacker as a friend in any way. He'll never, he'll never demand that you go and, he'll never pressure you to do something that's wrong. You know that. Obviously. I think it's something you come to um, respect more and more as you get older. Like when I was a kid, like I didn't, you know, I'm like, oh yay, Jesus is my friend. But now I'm like, wow, Jesus has been there for me through really yeah, tough it, times. And that's the big thing about best friends, the tough times and the being willing to go through that together. Mm -hmm. So Jesus is a model for uh, sticking with it, being stubborn. Not stubborn in the bad way. <laughs> <laughs> stubborn in the nice, happy way that I'll never let you down. Sort of Jesus is the epitome of forgiveness. Yes. And that's a big part of friendship because we're only human. We make mistakes and we have had our share of fights. But being forgiving is important. And Christ is really a model for that. Yeah. The being forgiving and the compassion and the understanding and the empathy. So guys, how does your faith help you with uh, developing like true friendships and... You know, how does it help you be a true friend to other people? For me, like, the true friends that I have, like, the faith, our faith is one of the main things that, like, brought us together. And it's the thing that whenever I'm having a hard time with something, I can always turn to them and they always give me the faith aspect of, like, what I'm going through or whatever. And I really believe that, like, friends made through the faith are the ones that will be with you for forever because you have that incredibly close bond. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my faith helps me in, in that, you know, I see Jesus in other people. And 
I treat them like they were Jesus and they treat me like I'm Jesus because, you know, that's... And that's a really good outlook to have, like, when you're dealing with friends because sometimes it gets hard because we get caught up in, you know, like, our own beliefs or, like, whatever uh, is going on in school, maybe gossip, like, I think Katie said it. I don't know if it was mm. Cora or Katie, but one of them said they get caught up in gossip sometimes. And um, I think that's a really good outlook because you would want to treat people like Jesus treated people because that's the image that we're supposed to, you know, exemplify in our lives, so. Mm -hmm. You know, you can always look to him as the perfect role model for the best friend because he'll be your best friend to the day we die and then afterwards as well. And I also think sometimes if we're like struggling with, you know, who we are in, you know, terms of relationships, I think we can always just say a prayer to God and, you know, he'll lead us and he'll tell us that we should be ourselves, you know what I mean? And he'll lead us in the right path. So you can always mm -hmm. pray. Jesus said this in John chapter 15, verse 13, greater love has no one than this, that he laid down his life for his friends. In the New Testament, we can see what true friendship is about by looking to Jesus as a model. Jesus was kind and loyal. He patiently helped each person to grow and understand. Even when they made mistakes, said stupid things, and ran away in his hour of need. Jesus forgave them, accepted their weaknesses, and continued to love them. He cared more for them than he did for himself. Jesus is here for each of us today as well, not just as a role model, but as a true friend. If you experience times in your life when you find it difficult to find a true friend, remember, Jesus is always there for you. Don't ever forget that. Put your faith and trust in him, and he will never let you down. How does your faith help you when it comes to making friends? Do you have a story about a special friend you would like to share with us on our website? Write to us at www.realfaithtv.com. Or you can contact us by phone at 609-406-7402. We leave you today with this quote from the book of Sirach. A faithful friend is a sturdy shelter. Those who find one find a treasure. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on, on Real, Real Faith, Faith TV. TV. God bless.